Noreen and welcome to my kitchen. Today we've got a tropical style side dish for you, a pineapple and coconut rice pilaf. Now I know initially you may not think those flavors go together, but trust me, this is amazing. We've got a little bit of Jamaican jerk seasoning in there that I threw together in another video, and we've got flaked coconut and fresh chunked pineapple that you're going to love. It just gives you a nice citrusy burst in here, and this is going to be a great side dish to go along with any of your summer barbecued meals. So let's go see how we make this delicious coconut pineapple rice pilaf. We're going to go over all of the ingredients that go into this pineapple coconut rice pilaf And this is just a really tropical version of rice pilaf And we're going to be serving it with some kebabs that we're throwing on the grill tonight And I thought it would just be fun to share So what you're going to need for rice pilaf Obviously we're going to start with two cups of rice One cup of orzo pasta Or you can break up some spaghetti or whatever you have on hand We're going to need three cups of chicken stock two cups of coconut water, or you can just use plain water, but I decided to use the coconut water in this because it's a coconut, you know, flavored kind of rice. We're going to use two teaspoons of Jamaican jerk seasoning that I made in another video. We're also going to use two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I have four cloves of garlic that I have minced. I also have two tablespoons of butter, and then I have um, one medium onion, this is a sweet Vidaya onion that I have chopped fine. And then to finish it all off, after the rice has cooked, we're going to fold in a half a cup of flaked coconut and one cup of fresh pineapple that has been cut into a very small dice. So now we're going to get started. We're going to go over to the stove and I'll be right back. All right, now I have heated up my butter and melted it. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to start to saute off the garlic and the onion a little. And when it's time to put the rice and the orzo in, I'll be back and I'll show you what happens next. All right, I finished sauteing off the onion and garlic, and you can see the garlic got a little bit brown, but that's all right. No worries, we're all good. Uh, put in the rice, gave it a stir. Now I'm going to put in the orzo. Give that a good stir. You want to make sure everything gets coated really, really well with oil. So just stir it on in there and make sure that you stir it well enough, all right? I have people who tell me that I stir too much, but frankly, you know what? That's just what who I am, and you know what? You can't do something correctly if you're not going to stir it and get everything incorporated the right way. So, what you want to do now is you want to keep this moving, and you don't want it to sit on the bottom for any length of time, but you do want to toast both the rice and the orzo. When you begin to smell a nutty fragrance, then you'll know it's time to add your liquid. When it's time to do that, I'll bring you back, and you'll notice that it will be a little toasted brown, and you can't smell it, but I can. It will smell a little nutty, and then we'll add our liquid. We've been gone only a few minutes, and you can start to smell a difference. You can start to see a difference visually. It's starting to brown off and you can start to actually hear a difference because it will start to sound like it's crackling or popping just a little bit. Um, not so much like popcorn, but it does have a little bit of a, a specific sound when the grains of rice start to uh, get really hot. So now we're going to slowly add the uh, chicken stock. And it's going to steam up. And our coconut water, I'm just going to use to rinse out my chicken stock cup here. And give this a stir. And I'm also going to add my jerk seasoning in here with the rice. Oh, it smells fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, now you just want to bring this to a simmer over medium-high heat. And then you're going to want to put a lid on it, turn it down to medium-low heat, and then you're going to want it to boil or simmer until the rice absorbs all of that liquid. It's going to take about 10 minutes at least. So we'll be back when it's time to put the lid on it. All right. Our rice is up to a simmer that I cannot stir down, and we're going to go ahead and pop the lid on it, and I'm going to turn the heat down 
to a medium low. We're going to cook this until the rice has absorbed all of the liquid and we can see uh, little divots in the surface of the rice. I'll bring you back when it's time to show you what that looks like. All right, our rice has finished cooking and you see these little divots? That means that all the water has been absorbed and it's made like little steam vents inside of it. You don't want to cook it too long because it will burn on the bottom. Do not take the lid off like I just did. I only did that so I could show you what it looks like. L turn off the burner, leave the lid on, let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. Now your cooking time is all going to be uh, dependent on what type of rice you use. If you use regular long grain rice, it's going to take you 20 or 25 minutes for it to cook. If you use par cooked rice, it's going to take you 10 to 15 minutes for it to cook. Um, so, converse, uh, thusly, if you, once you want it to sit in steam, if you're using long grain rice, you're going to want to let it steam for 20 minutes. If you're using par cooked rice or converted rice, you're going to want it let it steam for 10 minutes. So I'm going to let this sit and steam. We're going to go throw something on the grill and we'll be back when this is ready to move on to the next step. Okay, our rice has steamed for 10 minutes at least and probably more like 15. But now all you want to do is um, fluff it with a fork and this is where the pineapple and coconut come in. We're just going to go ahead and toss these in here and just using the same fork kind of stir them in. There's not too much coconut in here and yes I use sweetened coconut but that's alright because this is kind of a sweet and savory side dish and those little punches of citrusy flavor from the pineapple are going to be really great. I did not cook the pineapple in with the rice so that's going to add a little burst of freshness. The coconut's going to add a little sweetness, and I'm going to let this sit for another five minutes before I serve it. Well, there you have it. I've made a timbal of a just delicious coconut and pineapple rice pilaf. Um, as luck would have it, we lost the final uh, footage of this video. So I am reusing some footage from the beginning of the video uh, where we actually shot the open. But, you know, it is what it is and we're just going to roll with it. This pineapple and coconut rice pilaf was incredible. It was delicious. It was flavorful. It wasn't too sweet and it went perfectly with the shrimp and chicken shish kebab that we had made that night for supper. I promise you this is going to totally blow it out of the water for you and it's going to impress your family and friends. It was really easy to make and it was just off the charts delicious. Uh, we had lots of it left over and we actually ate it for two other meals during that particular week. It was very easy to reheat and it was delicious with everything that we had it with. We had it with a uh, with a pork tenderloin from the grocery store because we had a really busy night so I picked one of those up and we had it with some grilled chicken as well later that same week. But this will easily serve, uh, I would say, 8 to 10 people. And I hope that you give it a try because it was really, really delicious. So I hope that you give this coconut pineapple rice peel off a try. And I hope that you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. I hope you liked what you watched today. And I hope that you try it. And I hope that you love it. Um, if you like what you saw, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and giving me a positive rating. And also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're already not a subscriber so that you don't miss out on any of the fun we have here in our kitchen every single day. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to come by tomorrow. Until next time, happy eating!